I was still a thief when I met Anam. And though only 15, I was an experienced and fairly successful hand. Take care, Ramesh. He was about 25, a tall, lean fellow, and he looked easygoing, kind and simple enough for my purpose. I hadn't had much luck of late and thought I might be able to get into the young man's confidence. Anil was watching a wrestling match when I approached him. Would you like to have something? <laughs> You look a bit of a wrestler yourself. <laughs> a little flattery helps in making friends. So do you. Well, I do wrestle a bit. What's your name? Uh, Hari Singh. <laughs> I lied. I take a new name every month. That keeps me ahead of the police and my former employers. After this introduction, Anil talked about the well-oiled wrestlers who were grunting, lifting and throwing each other about. I didn't have much to say. Bill, please. Coming, ma'am. Huh? Hello again. I want to work for you. But I can't pay you. Perhaps I misjudged my man. Can you feed me? Can you cook? I can cook. If you can cook, maybe I can feed you. I live here. You will sleep on the balcony. That is the kitchen. Now go and cook something. Hmm. I had light. I don't know how to cook. Huh. <laughs> you know what are you saying? Be off. But I didn't.
Hi. Oh ho. <laughs> Come in. He patted me on my head and said, "I will teach you how to cook. Now put some salt in it." Your coffee. Thank you. What are you doing? Hmm. I'm writing. Would you like to learn how to write? Would I? Yes, yes, of course. Today we will learn. How to write your name? He taught me to write my name and said he would soon teach me to write whole sentences and to add numbers. I was grateful. I knew that once I could write like an educated man, there would be no limit to what I could achieve. It was quite pleasant working for Anil. I made the tea in the morning and then would take my time buying the day's supplies, usually making a profit of about a rupee a day. I think he knew I made a little money this way, but he did not seem to mind. Anil made money by fits and starts. He would borrow one week, lend the next. He kept worrying about his next check. But as soon as it arrived, he would go out and celebrate. One evening he came home with a small bundle of notes. I have just sold a book to a publisher. I had been working for Anil for almost a month and apart from cheating on the shopping had not done anything in my line of work i had every opportunity for doing so anil had given me a key to the door and i could come and go as i pleased he was the most trusting person i had ever met and that is why it was so difficult to rob him it's easy to rob a greedy man because he can afford to be robbed but it's difficult to rob a careless man sometimes he doesn't even notice he's been robbed and that takes all the pleasure out of the work well it's time i did some real work I am out of practice and if I don't take the money he'll only waste it on his friends after all he doesn't even pay me
600 rupees in 50s. I could live like an oil rich Arab for a week or two. When I reached the station, I did not stop at the ticket office, but dashed straight to the platform. I have never bought a ticket in my life. The Lucknow Express was just moving out. The train had still to pick up speed, and I should have been able to jump into one of the carriages. But I hesitated. For some reason, I can't explain. And I lost the chance to get away. When the train had gone, I found myself standing alone on the deserted platform. I had no idea where to spend the night. I had no friends, believing that friends were more trouble than help. And I did not want to make anyone curious by staying at one of the small hotels near the station. The only person I knew really well was the man I had robbed. Leaving the station, I walked slowly through the bazaar. In my short career as a thief, I had made a study of men's faces when they had lost their goods. The greedy men showed fear. The rich men showed anger. The poor men showed acceptance. But I knew that Anil's face, when he discovered the theft, would show only a touch of sadness. Not for the loss of money, but for the loss of trust. I found myself in the Medan and sat down on a bench. The night was chilly. It was early November and a little drizzle added to my discomfort. Soon it was raining quite heavily. My shirt stuck to my skin and a cold wind blew the rain across my face. I went back to the bazaar and sat down in the shelter of the clock tower. The clock showed midnight. I felt for the notes. They were damp from the rain. Anil's money. In the morning, he would probably have given me two or three rupees to go to the cinema. But now I had it all. I couldn't cook his meals, run to the bazaar or learn to write whole sentences anymore. I had forgotten about them in the excitement of the theft. Whole sentences I knew could one day bring me more than a hundred rupees. It was a simple matter to steal, and sometimes just as simple to be caught. But to be a really big man, a clever and respected man, was something else. I should go back to Anil, I told myself, if only to learn to read and write. I hurried back to the room, feeling very nervous, for it is much easier to steal something than to return it undetected. I opened the door quietly, then stood in the doorway. In clouded moonlight, Anil was still asleep. I crept to the head of the bed. My hands came up with the notes. I felt his breath on my hand. I remained still. Then my hand found the edge of the mattress and slipped under it with the notes. I woke up late next morning. Anil had already made the tea. I made some money yesterday. Now you will be paid regularly. My spirits rose. But when I took the note, I saw. It was still wet from the night's rain. Today we will start writing sentences. He knew. But neither his lips 
nor his eyes showed anything i smiled at anil in my most appealing way and the smile came by itself without any effort